I'm Dr. Shelley Cooper, and I'm with Cascade Media. And today we're going to talk about teledentistry. And we have Dr. K with us. And Dr. K is going to take us all through the road of her journey of dentistry and teledentistry. And as we know, the purpose of our show is to educate, enlighten, and empower you. So Dr. K, why don't you tell us about yourself and um, how you got into doing what you're doing? Well, thank you for having me. I'm delighted to be here. Uh, I'm Maria Kunstotter. Everybody says Dr. K because it's a lot easier than Kunstotter. Um, I am the a dentist. I've been a dentist for a while and the CEO and co-founder of The Teledentist. And uh, as a dentist, I know you want to talk about my journey for being a dentist. I decided to be a dentist after trying pharmacy school, which I was six weeks in organic chemistry and realized I hated chemistry. So I thought this is probably not a good profession for me. Then I went back into dietetics and nutrition and realized while I was working with patients that they only listened to their doctor. So I decided I wanted to be able to have the at least first and last say of what patients do and didn't want to be a physician. So I applied to dental school at a time where only 3% of practicing dentists were women. Um, and it was a very exciting journey being a very small group of, uh, of women in dental school, but I loved my patients in my practice. I love being able to have an impact on their total health. Uh, I love the, the environment of where you could actually talk to people and make an impact. And therefore, I have amplified that uh, when I found out that um, people were going to emergency rooms in this year, last year alone, it was $3 billion healthcare dollars were spent in emergency rooms on toothache codes alone. And wow, I, that funny. statistic I found out in 2014 and just thought that is just crazy. There's no dentist in emergency rooms. No care is given. Patients wait an average of four hours because they're a low acuity need. And the cost is over $1,200. And I just thought this is totally wrong. What I love to say is if somebody comes in to the emergency room and I do this in visual with a broken arm, they don't call in a cardiologist. They call in an orthopedic surgeon. So when somebody comes into an emergency room like this with a toothache, now they can call in a dentist virtually, and the teledentist was born on that concept. So I love reaching out and taking care of people uh, in my office, and my practice, and now I have a group of 300 dentists nationwide that in each state and uh, that patients can contact via the teledentist and talk to about e emergency or just urgent or just simply what do I do about this non-emergent but oral health issues and get the right specialist and the, at least somebody that knows what's going on and be able to actually answer their oral health care needs and that that's the teledentist. Well, and, and thank you for explaining that to me. I know we've talked about it and we did a little bit of work together in years ago, but um, can you talk a little bit about how a dietary habit might influence your dental outcome? Absolutely. Yes. Since I was a dietitian before I went to dental school. Oh, right, right. Okay. Really, <laughs> that really, and in fact, I taught uh, nutrition to the dental students after I got out of dental school. Um, absolutely. You know, poor oral health. You simply can't have good health without having good oral health. And bacteria in the mouth feeds on carbohydrates. And we aren't just talking about candy and sugar. We're talking about potato chips break down in your mouth into a carbohydrate. To put, you know, all sorts of things that we eat that are fast foods, easy to eat foods. Um, granola bars, They even though they sound healthy, they break down into carbohydrates in your mouth. So if you're doing a carbohydrate loading in your mouth and the bacteria is going, party in this mouth, we got some carbohydrates. It starts producing acid, which ends up causing cavities. Um, and poor oral health is related to smoking, you know, poor nutrition, um, not doing good home care. You know, we, we want people to have, you know, good oral health because it affects so many of our systemic conditions. It's been associated to diabetes, heart disease, Alzheimer's. Now they're drawing conclusions to poor oral health and Alzheimer's and being associated with all sorts of uh, things that we want to make sure that the patient stays healthy in their mouth, and then everything else works down. So definitely your diet is extremely important to your total health and to your oral health. So do you still practice dentistry on patients or are you exclusively the teledentist? I, I do virtual patient contact now. I don't do any hands-on and started that, basically went full-time with the teledentist uh, in 2018. So did not 
you know, ended my hands-on practice. I miss my patients, but it's always fun to be able to do a virtual consult with somebody and they go, thank you. I, I feel so much better just understanding, you know, we, our goal with teleministry is to triage the problem, find out what's going on with you. If you presented with, oh, I've got a toothache, then I would, you know, work with you on what's going on, what needs to be done, educate you on what the underlying conditions are. If you get treatment, what your treatment options are. So that people really are fully informed of their dental condition at the time. And they feel better just understanding that and having a specialist talk to them about it and know what their next step should be. Okay. And how have you seen the field of dentistry or the profession of dentistry change since you entered the market? <laughs> well, gosh, um, <laughs> a lot. Di digital dentistry right now we can make crowns by scanning the tooth with the digital uh, scanner and the crown can be made in the office by a machine that manufactures machinery um, a lot of things in digital contact with patients in terms of appointments and scheduling a lot has gone digital and we're working toward being able to do that virtual contact with your patient initially so that, you know, you can meet the dentist full face, you know, during COVID when the dentist had, you know, a mask on and goggles on and headgear on and all that, you never even got to see what your dentist looked like. Well, now at least the, even then they could do a virtual consultation with their dentist, meet the dentist, understand what, you know, what their goals are and be set up for the right kind of appointment. So virtual care, I predict it should take about 25% of the appointments out of the dental office and into a conversation like you and I are having mm -hmm. with the dentist or the healthcare oral healthcare provider. Well, that, that's good to hear because, you know, I'm in the field of, of uh, telehealth. And so it was a long journey trying to get people to understand that they can receive um, medical care. Several um, people just didn't want to get on board and then COVID happened and here we are. So they saw the benefits of it. I also noticed that in underrepresented, underserved and low income areas, there's always lack of access to health care, uh, medical care. What about dental care? Have you noticed dental that? Dental care as well? is abysmal in, in those areas. In fact, we have partnered with the National Minority Health Association to carry teledentistry into all of those underserved areas. Um, the American Medical Association has come out with a code so that in medical offices, they can apply silver diamine fluoride, which stops decay. And in just July 1 of this year, and we are working to train medical staffers and how to use this uh, um, device, not device, this material, how to apply it properly, how to decide what needs to be done so that we can Anywhere there is a, a physician in a Q, FQHC or a physician's office, they can actually take that patient, see when they were in the dentist, if they aren't going to go and actually stop the decay process in their mouth with this material and, and really get some contact. So the whole healthcare system can help take care of oral health. And just not enough dentists and people don't go to the dentist often enough, but they do go to the doctor. They do go to the emergency room and the whole healthcare system addressing this terrible healthcare disparity of oral health will make an impact in the next couple of years. We're very excited to work with this group uh, and they're really innovators and they're working with us to promote uh, teledentistry into those uh, underprivileged areas and, and the areas that have no access. Yeah, and, and you made reference to FQHCs and so uh, federally qualified health center and they offer health care on a sliding scale and normally in, in areas where people can get to the care because a lot of times people don't realize some folks can't take just time off of work. They have family commitments. They also might not have transportation. So it might take transferring two or three times on the bus line to get to an appointment. And you've got your kids in tow with you and trying to get back to work. So teledentistry, I believe, can really make a huge difference for people who don't have access to care, first of all. And then those folks who may not have the insurance plans that allow them to go to whatever dentist they want to go exactly. to. Can you can you kind of speak to the insurance industry and how it works with? Exactly. With that is huge. So 50% of the population does not have dental insurance. So we're talking about a huge population and insurance carriers will tell you 50% of the members that have dental insurance don't use it. Don't ask me why, but we found that in, when I was doing dentistry. So we have a huge population that doesn't even have a dentist. And you talked about employees. We, we, you know, we can keep an employee on the job if they can contact the teledentist at work going, oh, this is starting to hurt. 
We can e-prescribe, you know, necessary medications. They can pick up their medication on the way home from work, take it with dinner, start to feel better that evening and actually go back to work the next day because our company takes it one step further than telehealth companies. We actually, if the patient needs a dental uh, dental referral, our customer service representatives help them find an office in their area, in their network. And we do go to sliding scale clinics, whatever we we can do to help that person get into a dental office if they need hands-on care. So knowing that you have an appointment, knowing that you're starting to feel better makes you able to go back to work uh, and and work and be you know not miss time off of work as well. So yeah, the, the insurance industry um, we're 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 partnered with some of the bigger insurances to provide teledentistry for their members. But there's a whole huge population that does not have insurance, and uh, of that three billion healthcare dollars, half a billion of that spent in the ERs was Medicaid dollars. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could do ER diversion for all of those patients and take that half billion to treatment? instead of ineffective time wasting sitting in an emergency room. So we're, we're you know, that having access, one of our, our favorite reviews, we have five-star review ratings on Google, was a woman that said we were a lifesaver for her. So she literally said in her review, she's a single mom, has two disabled children, and she was considering getting them out of bed, dressing them and taking them to the emergency room with her at two o'clock in the morning because she hurt so badly. And she was Googling and found the teledentist and they managed to, to obviously talk to her, address her needs, get some medication for her on board. And she said, you know, we were a lifesaver for her. Well, that was my next, going to be my next question. Do, can you give me some um, real life stories? And that mm -hmm. that was one what about working with seniors? Do you have any information about that or any, any well, stories? Very good question. A lot of people say now that, you know, the senior citizens don't have the ability to, you know, to do technology. And I was like, oh, my goodness. Since, first of all, I'm a senior citizen. Mm -hmm. and secondly, these people are on, you know, FaceTime with their grandchildren and they have the technology. And our, our, one of our favorite stories, thank you for asking, was a 91-year-old woman in Iowa who had a computer so she logged on and filled out her information, but did not have a, a camera or, or audio with her computer. So she called the phone line and we talked to her on her landline phone. This is how smart this one was and yet had all her information in the records and were able to help her uh, get the care she needed and the medication and then the referral she needed with all of her being able to use that technology. So seniors are extremely technology savvy. And if they're not, they have a, a son or a daughter that can help them too. But we had a great response with the senior senior population. Well, you just, you must be reading my mind because my next group of questions have to do with in the urban areas and more densely populated areas, there's internet. In the rural areas, the broadband is not as reliable. So you mentioned that the teledentist can be done on a regular landline, and you you gave an example of that. What has been your um, experience? Is it is a teledentist? Um, is it being used in the rural areas as well? And if so, what's what's been the response? <laughs> another wonderful patient. She was in her late 60s, early 70s, can't remember. It, again, in the middle of somewhere, and it was going to take her an hour to drive to the pharmacy. She said, when you call in the prescription, tell them I'm coming because they close at, at noon. And so I, I called the pharmacy literally in whatever little town this was and said, she said she's coming. And they go, oh, I know she's already called us. So yes, you know, unfortunately, rural has, but that's a big goal of our, um, is rural expansion of broadband. And when they do that, we just get the chance, you know, of expanding uh, healthcare access uh, even further. And, and we're looking forward to that being able to bring healthcare and teledentistry into the rural areas at a higher rate and, and more successfully as well. Well, when you, when you bring it to different areas, uh, you mentioned partners. Are there other partners that you that the teledentist uh, organization has partnered with to help bring these services into underrepresented rural and, and areas that don't have access to care? Well, we, we actually are in the cloud. So if people are doing some SEO searching for us, they can find us on, you know, on their Internet, on their phone. Um, mm -hmm. The thing that we have found, no matter what economic, socioeconomic division people are in, they all all have cell phones mm -hmm. uh, and right. they can reach us through their cell phone, which is, you know, fantastic. Um, we do like to get a video because we want to make sure that there's not a life threatening emergency. 
But statistically, only 5% of people that end up in an emergency room with a toothache are true medical emergencies. So 95% of that $3 billion didn't need to be there. I mean, that's huge wow. statistics. But if somebody has a toothache, they're always going to put on their on their health form that it's swollen because they, they run their tongue over and go, oh, yeah, it's puffy back there. It's swollen. We want to make sure it's not swollen up into the eye or down into the neck. That's a true medical emergency. Since we've been doing this since 2018, I think we've had five uh, that we've sent to the emergency room. That's it. I mean, that's all the numbers we've had. Again, back to that 95% don't need medical emergency uh, care. So yes, that, you know, we we part, we are online. They can find us easily just by doing search for us. And we will work with, we're trying to work with schools in, in the rural areas so that their kids understand this. They can bring the information home. We're working with FQHCs in rural areas. But again, we, and hospitals, you know, so that if they end up in the hospital, we're trying to keep them from going to the hospital, but they may not get that information. Um, they'll be able to access the teledentist at the emergency room instead of going through that whole you know, $1,200 expense of the whole emergency room process. Right, right. Well, it sounds like you're doing a lot to bring healthcare, dental healthcare, especially into areas that don't ordinarily have that. And that is the goal of, of Diversity Telehealth, my company as well. So, and the Come On Now platform that, that does that. When we think about bringing dental or oral health into areas what would be some of the recommendations that you would give? Pulling, maybe putting on your, your dentist hat again or being the teledentist, what recommendations do you have for ordinary folks? How should they take care of their teeth and what should they do to make their teeth stay with them as long as possible? Super, thank you for asking that question because it always surprises me that people still don't understand that for children. I mean, obviously if we can stop the decay process when people are babies and little did you know two percent of two-year-olds see a dentist but they all see their their medical provider you know that they, they they see the pediatrician um so make sure to ask the pediatrician about their oral health and try and get a referral for a dentist because baby teeth need to be brushed if a person you're supposed to brush your teeth twice a day and a child has the minute they have teeth those teeth should be brushed and get the food and the particles off twice a day, just like you do as an adult. But good oral hygiene, you know, don't use your teeth to open. We actually have people that say they opened something with their teeth and broke, you know, broke a tooth. So <laughs> these, you know, for adults, they're supposed to last a lifetime. So take good care of them, brush and clean. And we do recommend seeing a dentist at least twice a year, at least once a year and with really good oral hygiene, um, because it's very important for your total health. Again, good health begins with the mouth and you cannot have good heart health, good respiratory. And one of the things I like to describe when I talk about hospitals is if you have plaque buildup on your teeth and you're laying in a hospital bed, like <laughs> I'm very visual, you're inhaling all the biofilm that's on your teeth into oh. your lungs. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, and also, you know, just in your daily living, you know, if you're not taking good care of your teeth, you're inhaling all that ba bacteria into your lungs. So brushing and flossing, even though we hear it constantly, is critical to maintain your total health. And, and that I think people need to, it's not just your teeth, it is your total health that you're impacting by taking good care of your oral health and well, your that, children. That, that's really important to hear. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step out on a limb here and ask you, what have you found to be the best toothbrush, the best toothpaste, floss, because when we go to the store, we look and see, okay, first of all, for me, what does the family like? What can I afford? What tastes good? What am I really going to use? Because buying that stuff and putting it in the, in the um, medicine cabinet doesn't do any good. What are your recommendations for um, good oral health in terms of those products? Normal American household, you open all these drawers and there's products that are laying around commercialism of all these. So here's, here's the real true bottom line. It is the mechanical scrubbing of the surface of the tooth that removes all that. You don't need toothpaste. I can't tell you how many people have said, I ran out of toothpaste, so I stopped brushing my teeth. It's like, no, 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 no. Truly, truly, it is the mechanical scrubbing that gets the plaque off the teeth with just water. And any and, and definitely not a hard toothbrush. Glad you asked that. Should be a soft toothbrush because you can really put pressure on with a soft toothbrush. With a hard toothbrush, you're actually causing gum gum irritation and, and, and actually scrubbing some gum away. 
but it is that actual scrubbing that, that makes the bacteria and the plaque get off the teeth and get rinse it out. Now, the toothpaste was invented to have people enjoy that process. So whatever you like in terms of, you know, the taste, the flavor that will make you brush more often, and the kids as well, get that kind. Um, most of the areas in, the, in this country are fluoridated water, but if not, then get a fluoridated toothpaste. But remember, if you brush toothpaste on and spit it out real quickly, you're not really having a big impact with toothpaste. It's that scrubbing action of the toothbrush. And then, of course, I like to tell people to floss because in between the teeth, the toothbrush does not go, but floss does. So um, just think of it as a mechanical scrubber. Soft toothbrush only. I, I, people ask me, why do they sell hard toothbrushes? Because you shouldn't use one. And I said, why do they sell cigarettes? <laughs> they sell all kinds of things that aren't good for us because they make money doing that. So the dentists always recommend a soft toothbrush and use that toothbrush, whether or not you have toothpaste. And if the toothpaste makes you enjoy brushing more than use the toothpaste. Well, that was a lesson learned. I, I never knew that. Never knew that. And don't pay extra for whitening toothpaste because, again, you, you brush it on, you spit it out. It's not going to really have an impact on whitening anything. It just costs more. It's marketing, marketing, marketing that a lot of those products are there for. So, um, you know, don't fall prey to the marketing when you even think about that kind of thing and don't spend extra money on whitening toothpaste or anything along that line. Well, you brought up another topic that I was going to bring up. This It looks like this was planned. It really wasn't. I mean, we had some general ideas, but... As we age, should our gums recede or is that something or pull back away from our teeth? Can you talk a little bit about that, especially with seniors and and um, we're talking about uh, health of the gum. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, about 65 percent of adults have periodontal disease. A huge, huge amount of and tell us what gum, periodontal gum, disease, gum is. disease, basically that causes that. You know, if you have a completely healthy mouth, you're not going to see gum recession uh, unless you're scrubbing hard with that hard toothbrush. But you know, 65 percent of the population has gum disease. So if you see gums pulling away, puffy red, again, you need to have a professional cleaning, mm -hmm. get into the dentist, and have it taken care of. But it's not just a uh, long of tooth does not mean uh, normal for for aging. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of getting a healthy mouth. Well, you've brought so many topics to us. I'm I'm truly educated, which is our goal, and I've been enlightened, and I'm hoping we're empowering our listeners and our viewers. Is there a final thought you'd like to leave us with today? I, again, the, I think the most important thing that I want people to understand is good health begins with the mouth. Make sure you take care of this mouth. I mean, that you go into the physician and they're going to look down your throat and just work on everything below that and give you medication. A diabetes cannot be controlled if you have poor oral health. So make sure that you address your oral health and keep it healthy. And then the rest of you is going to be healthier. And statistics show that you are you know, increasing your life by improving your oral health. So, so definitely you know, call the teledentist. If you don't have a dentist, we'd be happy to work with you. Uh, finding one in your area that will work with you. And, and just take really good care of these early whites. It's not just for smiling. Well, thank you, Dr. K, the thank teledentist. You. And we um, are happy that you were able to join us today. Um, if anyone has any questions or you'd like to learn more, feel free to email me at Dr. Cooper CMG, and that stands for Cascade Media Group, Dr. Cooper CMG at gmail.com. Thank you so much and have a great day. The program is brought to you by the Kansas City Business Association.